All right. Oops. How's it going, Hermanshu? All right. Okay. Um, and then for the um, for that PR, what specifically was it you wanted to discuss in there? So in this example, uh, we are using uh, we are using scikit-learn's classifier, mm -hmm. uh, random forest classifier. And the uh, accuracy is like uh, 27%. Uh -huh. uh, so I looked into it and because uh, like I was able to train the model finally using GCP. So I didn't know that accuracy would be that low. Uh -huh. I thought it would be like 50%, but it is low. So I looked into it and it's because we are not rescaling the features. Uh, okay. So when you say rescaling features, the features, what do you mean? Like some features have value, like I'm uh, giving three feature extractors, right? Mm -hmm. So so like one of the feature ex extractors extracts values in the range of like 0 0.0001 to 1000 or something like that. Yeah. So because of that range, the accuracy drops a lot. So you have to renormalize them or something? Like... Uh, I don't know if we uh, like I'm giving the I'm giving the features one by one like three different features I'm not uh, combining them into one so I don't think that rescaling them a different uh, in, uh, one by one will work best for getting a better accuracy all right so I mean at the end of the day we still need the new model then right uh, the CNN yeah Right. Yeah, we okay. do need that. All right. Well, that's, I mean, that's sort of what we're expecting here. So, um, yeah. All right. Like, um, I think we should maybe add uh, sklearn.preprocessing integrate into DFFML. So. For different things or do like not for only images. Yeah. Well, um, so what I'm getting, I guess, what does that entail then? Like like I was giving an idea like we should have that feature too. So what what would that what would that mean then if we have that feature like what what would you would you be able to how would you use it I guess in this example is what I'm was what I'm saying. Uh, like uh, when I get the training data the the fee, uh, like I can rescale them using the preprocess scikit learn dot preprocess. Oh, I model. see. I see what you're saying. Okay, so does that make sense as one of the I mean, it sounds like that sort of fits right in with what your existing plan was with your project was to do OpenCV and then do scikit stuff, right? So, I mean, scikit image versus scikit preprocess, it's all sort of, you know, similar, right? So, it's are you are you sounds like you're just going to plan on adding in adding some operations around that then? Yeah, I was yeah, I just wanted to talk to you about this cool. like I can add them. That sounds great. As yeah. operations. Yeah, so uh, we'll be adding some of the scikit preprocessing functions as operations. All right, great. Um, so, like the example I've added and the test for it I've added is I don't, I'm not able to find that in the logs. I don't know why it's not being run. Ah, uh, okay. Um, it's probably because there's a lack of an init py. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think you're gonna need a you need a init py. Um, I need okay. so yeah. Oops. I believe that will do. Um, so, okay, so let's see, example's not running. Uh, 
Okay. Um, all right. Okay. Um, so, and then I'll review. So I'll review this offline. Oops. Okay. Um, okay, and you've started on the pre-trained CNN. Is there anything else there on your front? Yeah, I'm using the Torch Vision Red Library. Okay. So you said you're using Torch? You're using PyTorch? Yes. Okay, great. All right. Is that is that all from you then, Saksham? Yeah, that's all from me. All right, Hamanshu. So, how have you how have you been, and and what's on your what's on your uh, to talk about list today? Ah uh, yeah. So actually, I haven't um, progressed. Yet. I just got my laptop fixed. Oh yeah, that's so right. Yeah. Working and, and yeah. So yeah. I'll be doing the same thing I was planning to do the previous week. So I'll be adding more operations and I'll be finishing up the PR examples PR. Cool. Yeah. Uh, John, I pushed the test which I have currently. Like it's a work in progress. All right. So uh, there's a part which is blocking the rest of the function. So I wanted to discuss about that. Was. That's the part where I'm stuck now. All right. Great. Okay. So that sounds. I mean. All right. Okay. So unless anybody has any but anything else. Um, we're going to jump right into debugging that. Does that anybody have anything else? No. Uh, yeah, so I last week, uh, like Friday, you were reviewing Himanshu's PR and you said to use uh, pretty in the predict command. Like, yeah, so how would we test them? Because we uh, use JSON loading to get the records in the test file. Um, well, let's see if we look at this. Yeah, so here, okay, yeah, the output is predict. Well, you can load the, I mean, the data, I mean, you can load, when you run predict, you can run it as a bash script, right? Or you can do what we've done before where you read the context, contents of the file with shell X. Um, let's see where that go. Um, yeah, like test quick start and stuff. Well, text test quick start is broken right now, but so you can do something like this where you read in it, you read it in with uh, shell X. Oh, where is it? Yes, yeah, shell X split. And then where's the rest of server command? Yeah, okay. So basically, um, so basically you read, you read in the file and then you can, um, you know, uh, get, you know, make it all one line and then you can split it according to like regular shell parsing rules rather than just like dot split and this shell X will do that for you. Um, and then uh, you can sort of replace whatever index you need or add, you know, pretty to the end of it. And then, right, because if you did, you know, if you did this and then you did server command, you know, dot append uh, pretty and then you did, you know, you ran it with the uh, CLI uh, dot some, you know, CLI dot CLI or something, then it will, it will, uh, You'll, you'll end up with a pretty printed output. Um, or, well, actually, I guess the reverse of this, right? If you pop off the last index, you'll end up without the pretty printed output. You'll end up with the uh, with the JSON, right? Or, well, in this case, you'll just end up with the results. Does that make sense? Well, I didn't get that. All right, so let's see. Um, for example, let me just pull this down here. Okay, so... Okay, let's see. Yeah, to use pretty and have test get JSON. Okay. All right. Um, all 
Okay, let's see what's the best way to do this. Um, where are we? Shared config is proving to be a massive disaster, um, just by the way, so, um, there's, there's more stuff wrong with it, um, I don't really know how to explain it right now, but, let's see, um, let's see, okay, so, um, git fetch, TF with an FPS. All right, um, and then the file is samples. Let's see, let's use. Okay. All right. And we probably want to get rid of log debug if we're going to use pretty, because that'll be all over the map then. Okay, so. All right. Uh, where's the test file? Oh, I didn't. Uh, let's see. Test file, test file. Okay, here we go. Uh, yeah, and last week we found out the relative path. So. Ah, okay. Is this the one? Yes, okay, this is what we're talking about here. Alright, so NLP predict. So. Alright, um. Can you guys see well enough, or should I make this bigger? Yeah, can you zoom in? Okay. So, all I'm doing, I'm just breaking this stuff out here. So, So, 
basically what we've done here, right, is we, we read in this, this function is just going to go and actually just for, for clarity's sake, we'll just do this. Um, and I'll do the exact way that I was showing you guys last week. Um, yeah. No, dot parent, that's right. So this is exactly what I was talking about last week when I said, you know, uh, path like dot parent and then do the relative path from the file. And this file happens to be in the top level directory right now, but um, I think we covered that last week too of what, what happens if it's not. Um, so let's see. Um, all right, okay. So basically we read in the file, right? And then you get rid of the new lines and you get rid of the uh, backslashes. Thank you. Um, and then you, you, you use shell X to split it out. Um, and actually, I wonder if we can just get rid of these, maybe. That's a good question. No, we can't. Okay, yeah, you got to get rid of the new lines and the backslashes. Um, and then you end up with this array of, you know, like what we're going to pass to the to the to the CLI, basically, right? Um, and so, uh, let's see if we can do. We can import from dffml dot CLI dot CLI import CLI. I think it is. Um, Okay, so what is this? Okay. I think it's CLI dot CLI. Uh, that's if we're running async. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's async. Um, this is main. Okay, it's argv. All right. All right. Okay. So this is basically this is exactly like if we wanted to just take a um, take a shell file and run it as a command. Um, this is what we would do, right? And so if we wanted to add pretty to the output of this, so first off we should like, um, well, so if we wanted to add, like if there was pretty on this command, right? Um, and yeah, I added it at the end, right? Then we can just say, um, you know, command equals command, and then, you know, negative one. Um, and we should end up without or wait, nope, never mind. <laughs> Up until negative one. And um, now we should end up without pretty on it, right? Um, so then you can take that and you can pass it. Yeah, if you're in the event loop, you can pass it to CLI. Um, sync def CLI. Right, you can pass it to CLI like so. Um, and then you would end up with the resulting uh, you would end up with all the records as the output here. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's, that's what you could do in this situation to get rid of, of, of pretty. And I think when you pass it to CLI, you also need to, uh, when passing to CLI, uh, we need to remove, uh, first argument, which is DFFML since usually uh, main main takes care of this for us. Um, okay, yeah, so um, yeah, just get rid of the first one, right? So uh, whatever this is, I'm sure I'm messing it up. Yeah, I did again. 
but yeah, so you could do this, right? Um, so now this is what it is originally. We get rid of pretty. Um, so this is what it is originally. We get rid of pretty at the end, and then we get rid of dffml, and then we can call, um, you know, the the await on cli.cli right there, and we should end up with the records. Um, let's see, and I'll just dump this into Gitter. Um, or I'll dump this right here. Um, yeah. Does that make sense? And sound uh, yes. good? Yeah, it's, uh, it now makes sense. Thank you. Okay, cool. Um, okay, great. Okay. Um, Okay, so, all right, let's jump into uh, to Augen's stuff here. All right. Um, can you share your yeah, screen? Is yep. Uh, so, uh, so currently, like how I'm testing it now is, like I start the server on one tab, then I start the server node in another, and the primary node in another one. So, like if I do it like this, it works, uh, but uh, it's suppressing exceptions. So, for example, if I change this code to like if I just put another code and restart it. See, it just blocks the, it doesn't throw any exception. So which one was supposed to sh throw an exception? I didn't, I didn't catch that. See, I changed decode to decoder. So okay. It was supposed to throw and an are exception. you sure that function's getting called? Yeah, uh, it's getting called because if I like change it back, You can see that it's oh, okay. getting called and it's printing the log messages. All right. Um, so I guess, and then is it running in a data flow? Uh, no, it's not running in a data flow. This is the initial setup part. Okay. Like, Can you I show me the code only, that's running this set instance details function? So it's a callback from this thing. All right. So okay. So, so I'll just describe what's happening from beginning to end. It looks uh, well. So okay, one second, because it looks like you're yeah. passing this to nc dot subscribe, and that's going to be a uh, 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 nats. So that's the nats pi, right? Yes. And that's yeah. a function there. So let's go take a look at the API there. Because okay. mm, my guess is that if it calls the function and there's no, uh, where's their documentation? Why is there not like real documentation? Uh, okay, there's no real documentation. All right, okay. Yeah. yeah that's um, okay. that's annoying. Okay, subscribe. Okay, callback. So is it the problem because they are not uh, tracing exception? Yeah, I think so because we're not. I mean, we're not calling that thing, right? So they're calling that yes. that function, right? Yeah. Which means that it can't be something that we're doing that's suppressing the exception. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, okay, let's just pull down this thing. Yeah, 
yeah but uh, if i like change it in a normal function also it's getting suppressed well it doesn't i mean so let's see uh, did you see that wait let me let me come see okay so whether it's what do you mean normal function whether so it's just a I lambda just or something change no i ch just changed dumps to dumb and it still got Oh, okay, so something within this it. main loop is getting is suppressing. So what's running this? Yeah. Uh, it in it context is called by the sub node. So whenever you start a sub node, uh, when you get, I'll yeah, I'll just show you this in it. Okay. So, so. Okay, okay. Uh, that's still getting called by this. Yeah, that's still being called by another lines. So okay, wait. Sorry, one second. What happens here? So, uh, oh, so uh, your sub node starts running with an oper a subset of operation, mm -hmm. and when it gets a connect to primary node subject, it initializes a context. Yeah. And that context will run everything. But yeah, that context is being initialized from a callback. So all the so the issue here is probably the fact that we're doing the callbacks. Okay. So. Um, callback, callback, callback. Examples, examples, clients. Okay. Oh, it has an is async parameter on it, um, which it looks like defaults to false. Um, so, what does that mean? Must use coroutine for async subscriptions. Uh, if callback is coroutine. Okay, I guess that. Uh, if I remember, like, I remember using that. I don't think it's related to this. Yeah, I don't think it I is. Yeah. Like, yeah, you have to manually set acknowledgement back. It's related to that. Okay. So, Koro. Um, like, it's very painful, like this way. Yesterday, I had to put so many pen statements <laughs> to get this thing working. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, loop call soon. Okay, the callback. Create task. Sub Koro. Okay, so what happens if... Okay, the problem is that there's no way to catch exceptions in these things. Um, do you see my screen right now? Uh, no, I'll stop listening. Okay. <clears throat> Can you press and again, John? Let's see. Uh, yeah. Oh, resume your presentation. For some reason, it's showing me, but not everyone else. All right. All right. Um, yeah, it works. All right, great. Um, so, this is the code in subscribe. So, let's see. If sub, let's see. If, if sub coro is not none if it is async create task otherwise it wait wait a minute if we're waiting here all right okay let me pull down that code or er, well then i have to run nat's server all right can you just can you open this file like do you know let's see where is this file which one is this um i mean so within nat's um like when you do you get a or well you don't get a stack trace like let's see where's how do we find where Nat says for you um uh let's see it should be like oops uh, import uh, like what's a request um print request uh, path Okay, so yeah, try this. Do like this, but with Nats. Um, 
I'll put it in Gitter. Nats or whatever, but so so try that and then open open the mm -hmm. open the file and we'll see what the hell's going on. It was an AIO. Uh, what was the file? Uh, let's see. It's AIO client dot PY. Okay. And then look for subscribe. Yeah, for Yeah, for Okay. So Okay, here's another interesting thing. So Actually, I might have spoke too soon. So, it looks like okay. So go in and 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 you see where I'm at. I just can't do that. And wait for messages. Yeah, yeah, found it, found it. Okay, so put a put a print statement right above this this guy um, with like message. You know, put sub dot coro. Mm -hmm and then message and then let's see what happens and then put one after saying you know done and then message right so to see see because we're assuming it's going to blow up basically right there right because as soon as it awaits that coroutine that coroutine should throw an exception and, and what we're saying is that the exception is not caught right um yeah or wait this is sub coro and sub dot cb wait uh sub coro is coaching okay yeah this works this works all right and then I guess just see what happens there when you run that I love Python because every time you have to do this with a C or C++ project, you oh. enter dependency hell, yeah. and then you have to recompile everything, and you're you're finally putting in a debug statement three days later. I mean, I guess you can use GDB, but then you need all the development headers. Seems to be they're never around. Yeah. I I have never figured out what the language would always be. I'd rather do this. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, Sprinting did it do something. anything? It's, yeah, it printed the bond method, and it also printed the done. It printed the done. Did yeah. is the error in there right now, though? No. Okay. Yeah. Put the error in there and see what happens. So that means we're in the right place. So. Uh, wait, put what the? Uh, put the error. Yeah, put the error in your function, the one where you put decoder. Oh, make I, it. I have already. I have already put the. Oh, okay, the and error. it's still printing done. Yeah. Uh, and what does it say? Sub dot coro is then. Is it the function that's gonna make an error? Yeah, it's yeah, it is. Okay, so so it awaits the coroutine that creates an error, and then it prints done. Is what you're saying? Okay. Yes. Um, can we see? Let's see what's going on again, because that it's not really making sense to me. Yeah. Oh, 
wait. Uh, yeah, I messed up the permissions. Just give me a minute. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay. Done and knit up. Done here. Okay. Yeah, so. Here by that. Okay. And so, and so then let's see the, let's see the code. Which one? Let's see the code. The the um, not the Nats one. The that one. Yeah, decoder. Okay. Right, so, but we're not getting to done. So let's see. Can you place a print right before and after message dot data dot decoder? before decoder here but it's not printing after decoder. All right. Yeah, it's and, but it's printing here, done. It's, it's printing yeah. done. What the fuck? Um, what the fuck? Um, okay. And it's printing sub dot bound method set instance Should detail. Should I try except block though? I mean the thing is, okay, bound method, set instance details, so, uh, set instance details, so, I mean, it's, it should be calling that goddamn function, um, let's see, what is this error CB, uh, CB, I'm guessing this is unrelated though. Um, yeah, do, wait, do we have. Okay. Um. Okay, it looks like on the connect call you can provide a error CB, which might be what we're looking for here. Uh, is that's uh, like the callback when there's a connection to the server? Well, it seems to be that it handles more than just that. Oh, okay, um, let's try. Uh, which function exactly? Error CB on the connect callback to the initial connection to the NAT server. Um, yeah, it looks like error, uh, fully spelled out error underscore CB. Okay. Um, and we can provide a coroutine there and, and have it print. Um, it looks like the error message. And. Uh, uh, can you, like, Place the link of that documentation page. Uh, I don't know where the documentation is, but you just 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 make a coroutine. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, there's okay. no. I don't know if there's going to be documentation. Oh, okay. oh, they do have documentation. I guess. Okay, so yeah, basically yeah. when you uh, do connect, okay. yeah, error, yeah, there you go, error CB, yeah, and then give it a coroutine. I wish they had lambda coroutines. I, I, I don't think they do. Yeah. And then just takes one argument. Yeah, so just print that, that here. Alright, great. 
sweet. Hey, Pipes, yeah, there you go. Alright, so nice. why the hell it's still printing done is pissing me off, but um, I guess maybe oh. uh, we probably should have printed yeah. sub.coro with done too because we might have found that it's not the same one. Um, okay. So yeah, okay, well that that gives us, I mean that, that lets us know what's going on here. So we have the error callback and that's, that's basically oh. how you're going to have to handle oh. this then. Okay. Um, nice. Yeah. Oh, I um, it only does the other one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, that I had to dig through the source code to find that. So, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> so, so this is not a... Uh, yeah, this is... I mean... Okay, so... Oh, and you added done here. Okay, now I see what happened, too. Okay, so yeah, done what, here. What, what, what was happening? Um, well, okay, so I... Let's see, yeah. I, I meant to say, like, done and then message so we can see whether it's the same message or not. So I think part of what we need to do, uh, but that that's not really going to help us that much, so much as I think saying, you know, done done here, and then sub.curro sub message, I think what we'll find if we do that, if we had done that, we would have found right away that the, that coroutine is not hitting done. It's a different coroutine that's hitting done. Okay. I think that's, okay. that, that just for our future debugging knowledge, you know, um, that probably would have would have it's probably we were probably seeing done from a different coroutine. routine um, now I know what to look yeah now we now we know what to do yeah this I mean this stuff can get really tricky uh, yeah yeah also, uh, like uh, like I um, there's some like I was trying to put everything together in a single test case but that failed me oh yeah so what's what yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, you can still see the, my screen, right? Yeah. Uh, so like uh, this part, I this is where I start the NAT server. So I initially tried the sub process except from a single IO, but it was blocking when I call like process communicate. Uh, yeah, don't call process system. communicate. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, if you call process communicate, it's gonna wait. For, yeah. yeah so you want to time. you want to do that's what I was saying about read line is you want to call read line. Um, because yeah, that's the line is also waiting. Yeah, well, it's gonna. It I should wait know. for one line, right? So, okay. and then the other thing is yeah, that. So, yeah, continue, please. So, yeah, the other thing is that standard out and standard error are both set to pipe right now, and I believe you okay. can set standard error to subprocess dot standard out, and then it'll give you both in one stream. Okay. Because okay. the other okay. thing that you could be happening that could be happening here is that the messages you're seeing may not be being printed one they might be being printed standard out instead of standard error or vice versa and by using that you're okay. just going to get them all right so okay. um okay. with one read line um yeah, uh, yeah. What, uh, what's happening here is like uh, when i do read line uh, like it it's just blocking it's not reading anything so initially i thought that the process was not running Mm -hmm. But uh, if I just start it and then like in another Python code, in the earlier one, just uh, start a client to connect to this server, it's getting connected. Okay, so well, so, so, so you're creating, okay, so there's one, one thing that's going on here. So you created a TCP server and said, give me a free port. And then you're asking mm -hmm. it to start the NAT server on that free port. So, yeah. The port is now technically free because the TCP server is closed at the end of that with block. However, okay. what we need to do is we need to tell NAT server to start on port zero. So just say dash p zero. Did that, that work? Didn't work? That didn't work. Yeah. And so why why didn't that work? And what happened there? Yeah, it was still connecting to 422. That's like the default port. And I started, like, if I start an ad server already, like, this is now running in, in 422. Okay, yeah, so basically yeah, it doesn't respect that argument. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, if I give zero, it just connect to 422. 
Okay, let's see. Um. But uh, with this code, it did start the server in the free port, but it's not giving anything in the stereo. But I remember getting output at some point of time, but uh, like it was not. I don't know what's happening there. So the other thing that you can try is um, the other thing that you can try here is uh, what is it called? Um, start new session or something? I believe set start new session to true on when you do p open. Um, and this is this is like a this is something that that um, <laughs> if you're ever if you're ever running a sub process from Python and, and it's not working, it's probably because you need to do start new session. Um, where is it? Um, yeah, start new session. Um, so if you're ever like banging your head against the wall, set this to true. Um, let's see. It's usually things that like request things. Things, for example, things that want their own. You guys like know what like a, a, a PTTY or, or like a TTY is, is. You know, one of the one of the terminals, right? Or one of the pseudo terminals is a PTT PTY pseudo terminal. Um, and so basically, those things assume that they know like the um, width of like those things assume you have some sort of physically displayed terminal window and they need access to that and so they won't they they won't operate correctly they will basically use the parents pty unless you just say start new session and then it'll be like okay like it'll it'll get its own pty and or well is it no maybe that's not no that's a different thing never mind sorry but start new session i believe makes it the parent of its group a process group or something. Let's see. Yeah, it but it's still getting blocked on replay. It's still what? It's still getting blocked on replay. It's like still getting blocked redline, on redline. Yeah. Okay. So like let's see. Like without redline, uh, like there's no way to verify if it, the server is actually. Okay, but why don't so let's set subprocess dot. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, let's see. Okay, wait. Okay, so we did. Yeah, do standard error equals subprocess dot std out. All caps. Yeah, okay, now let's try that. There you go. Hey, it worked. Yeah. Oh, what was happening? So basically, those logging messages are being printed to standard error. And so, if, oh, okay. if yeah, so basically this says combine, send standard out to standard send standard error to standard out and that way when you do read line on standard out you're getting both standard error and standard out otherwise you have to like set up this weird multiplexing thing where you have to read both of them and that's a pain in the ass so this is definitely the way to go okay with, yeah and with this code you should be good here and then i mean you you probably yeah, want to uh, yeah just uh, one one more thing though yeah so here uh, so the sub node is also like kind of is like it needs to be alive right all the time uh, yeah. When a primary node is getting connected. Probably so, create task. Uh, create task. Uh huh. And then Actually. you may, yeah. So you may want to do create task, and then you may want to use like a queue um, to say, or well, I guess you're you you're you're using nats as the queue. So basically, use use use. Let's see. Use create task to start the sub node, and then start okay. the server, and then or well. Okay. This, this, you're saying you start the sub you start the sub node basically like polling to wait until it can connect to NATS or is NATS always running for this whole thing? Uh, like what's like, the process? Uh, whenever a sub node starts, it waits till it gets connected to a NATS server. Okay. So NATS, uh, but NATS server uh, is like already running before. Okay, so NATS server is already running, and then. Yeah. We start so the sub node. Sub node connects to NATS server. And then we and start the primary. Yeah. Okay. So, so no need to be the waiting for the Okay. So so yeah, so you're going to need to do create task probably on the sub node, but you're just going to need to make sure that you 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 before you when you clean up everything at the end of this test, you check task.exception to see for you need to check task. You need to, you need to um yeah, you need to have the task have some way of shutting down gracefully, right? And then you need to have, and that that might be where you use a queue or something or an async io dot event, um, 
and then you just you know wait for the event to be set and then you basically just return from that that whatever the subscription so, is or whatever uh, like uh, what does it ask do does it call a function uh, and like add Create task. So async io create task just basically says run this thing in the background and return a, a task object. And a task object is but just like a. Yeah, sorry, go like ahead. I want to enter a context here, right? Like I want to call this. So you probably, I mean, you probably want a helper function to enter the context then. And then, okay, okay. or let's see. I mean, like let's see, yeah. Let's see. When, well, so when you enter the context. Let's see. So, so it's not actually entering a context. Uh, it's called, like all the uh, like when you enter when you call the enter method of sub node. It's doing the connect. Like, uh, it, yeah, it's doing the connect. Okay, and then it sits there and it sets up a few subscriptions and it's just gonna wait right until you exit. Yeah, it's gonna wait. Yeah. Okay. Uh, only when a primary node connects does it spin a context. All right. So you want to do? I mean. Then you can just call a enter. Basically, if that's oh, okay. if, yeah, you can just call a enter, right? Because and then whenever you call a exit, then your test is done, right? Actually, this okay. right here is probably going to work for you. Uh, but it's blocking. Why is it? I guess that's that's a big question. Then why is it blocking? Uh, because SN one like waits for. So what? What's the function uh, that blocks? Right, connections from primary node, right? Oh. It waits yeah, at, uh, before it starts that with block? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll show you that. Yeah. This right. one. So it's I got. It's actually like, uh, you, like it's running forever. OK. Because it might get requests from uh, like different primary nodes. OK. Like and where is the NIC nodes. node called? A NIT node, where is that called? Uh, it's called inside I mean, when you enter the context. When you enter the like the A and the method. Okay, and that is in the base class or something. Y yes. Okay. I'll show okay. So basically, when we enter this thing, it's gonna wait forever. Okay. So I think my I guess my feedback on this is that we should probably be using create task on a knit node because mm -hmm. if you think about it right like i think i think that once you i mean because or else or else or else what's the use in this being a context manager right it's basically you know because it, by the time we've exited this block we're done with the whole connection in which case it's really just a yes. function right so we really need a knit node to be a create task, we need to save the task structure um, mm -hmm. somewhere within this object, and then in a exit, we basically cancel the task. Um, or uh, you know, I still don't understand like how it can wait for, like how it can wait for. Uh, what do you mean? How it can wait for what? Uh, so uh, this has to. Like when you enter a NAT node, it has to connect to NAT server and it has to wait for the messages from the primary node, right? Mm -hmm. Do but you mean to move that uh, subscribe code here? Well, I'm saying if you put if you if you call create so create task basically says run this thing in the background, right? And so if you say you know well okay wait for is keep oh okay okay, okay. well okay uh, wait a minute like. Yeah, so basically what you did here is you just said subscribe and then you just said wait for this future that I'm never going to set as a result. So basically if you yes. just get rid of that keep running and then or when does I mean when would keep running get set is the question here. Uh, it it won't it, it it always runs. Okay, so I guess that's that's your solution to just get rid of that statement and then you'll you'll this will work. Okay. Right, cuz if you but, wanted uh, then won't like after it gets one connection, won't it exit? Um, well, like, let's uh, see. We need the node to be running always, so that whenever it gets this message, I mean, you would just put that in the body of. So if you have an async with block, right? You would just the body of that async with block would be something like you know this wait for keep running, right? Because you want. What you're trying to do is you're trying to create this node that basically says, okay, when I enter the node's context, I 
um, I start waiting for connections. Whenever I exit the nodes context, I stop waiting for connections, right? Okay. So the caller of that function knows when they want to stop waiting for connections, and therefore they're going to make the body of that with block exit whenever they want to stop waiting for connections, right? So if I made the but body... What happens when we like start using this in command line? Uh, well, I mean, it depends how we're going to make the command line, right? It's going to it's going to depend, right? So you're probably going to do something. I mean, there's a lot of different ways that you could do this, right? And the, and probably what's going to happen is basically we're just going to say, you know, we're going to have some kind of service command like we talked about at one point, right? And it's going to be, you know, service, um, uh, you know, like distributed or something, right? And it's going to be node. Yeah, so if and the you node, really want to keep it running, uh, we'll like put this thing. Yeah, you would. Like, like, Exactly right, and and ba well, basically, what's going to happen in the CLI is you're going to do async with, and then you're going to enter the context, and then you're just going to do like you know, uh, keep running, try, try, keep oh, running, okay. accept keyboard internet interrupt, right, and then okay. that'll be the whole thing, right, um, and then we'll make these a plugin, and so it'll be you know, DFFML service node plugin type of NATS, and then um, you know, and and yeah, that's how we'll sort of do this, right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good progress on this. Nice. Yeah. This is very. Uh, this is. Uh, <laughs> it's. I. 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 Is this is some of your first time doing like uh, network stuff? Have you done a lot of networking yeah, before? Yeah. It, it is your first time. No, 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 this is my first okay. Time. Yes. Yeah. This is so. So you're getting to see all the fun. <laughs> yeah, all the fun. It's, it's exciting. Like it's frustrating it is, sometimes, it? but like when you figure it out. It's really cool. Yeah, I know. I love it. I love it. Yeah, it's fun stuff. All right. Okay. So, is there anything else we wanted to talk about today? Uh, uh, no, no. Just yeah. Okay. Everything. That's cool. Yeah. I'm Great. We figured it out. Awesome. I'm glad we figured it out. Um, let's see. Um, so I needed to pass error CB to that's. Yeah, uh, right. please do post the recording after this. Uh, code? Uh, recording. Oh, the recording. Yes, I'm going to be posting the recording. Thank God I actually, you know, recorded it this time. So, All uh, right, sweet. Was good, like, if you <laughs> oh, wow, and for once we're on time pretty much. Wow, this is a, a miracle of a meeting. Okay, so Sakshan, I will review that PR offline, and then let's see, what else do I owe? PR on chatbot, I believe I did review that. Um... You did review that, like, I okay. made the fixes in a couple of times. Sweet. Okay, and then um, NLP tutorials, I think we, we talked about that last week. Um, right, Himanshu, was there anything else there? I uh, think... No, you, uh, you said you, you will review once more. Uh, okay. All right. Um, had you changed, I think, let's see. No, I haven't changed anything. Okay. So. Yeah, when you, when you once once you update it, I'll, I'll give it another, I'll give it another pass okay. here. Yeah. Um, sweet, yeah. Because once it's it, it's helpful to me when I'm reviewing when the CI passes, and I can sort of know, you know, it's I know this takes a few passes sometimes, and I'm sorry about that, but it's kind of like there's a lot of things happening, and and when I can, yeah. I, I don't always catch everything at, in the one pass. So, okay, great. So I'll just keep that on my to do list for next time when that's updated. All right, sweet. Thanks everyone, and I hope you all have a great week, and I'll talk to you all uh, on Gitter and maybe on Friday. Cool. Thanks. Thanks.